remember the first anime you ever watched? Maybe you were there from the beginning. Maybe you watched them on the floor of your living room as a kid. Or maybe, just like me, you came to anime late in your life, during his second golden age. Whenever it happened, there is no doubt you came across one anime that you fell in love with. And that's why I'm here in Japan, to find out why 2D characters and storylines that were produced on the other side of the world came to mean so much to millions all over the globe. My name is Mark Eric Seabon. Come with me as I travel across Japan to better understand the culture that created this unique art form and to understand how anime changed Japan and the world. Here on Anime in the Real World. I can still remember the anime that turned me into an otaku, and when it happened. It was in January 2016, and I got pressured into watching this anime. Now, I haven't watched an anime since I was a kid and really never gave him much thought. I grew up in an age where bad voice dubbing was the norm, and stories that were being broadcast to the States were juvenile at best. Call me a snob, that's okay, but when you grow up watching PBS, your viewing tastes become a bit skewed. But I watched said anime to the end, and I was hooked. I was amazed on how deep the storyline was and how connected I became to those characters. I had never felt this way about anything I've ever seen on a large or small screen before. When you have a degree in media production and learn how things are made in the entertainment industry, you become a bit of a cynic about the things you'll get emotionally invested into, media-wise. But that's exactly what I did. I became invested in an anime, and I couldn't stop watching. I couldn't stop watching this solely Japanese art form of storytelling. Oh, and that first anime, that anime that turned me into an otaku and brought me here to Japan to film this documentary, that anime was Madoka Magica. Perhaps not the softest introduction into anime, but it worked. That impact I felt has been felt by millions of people all over the world, so much so that the anime industry hit an all-time high in 2017 with $19.1 billion in global sales, fueled by television and movie distribution and merchandise sales, according to the Association of Japanese Animation. That's $2.15 trillion in yen and is on a steady increase since the 2014 peak. But this nearly $20 billion industry had to get its start somewhere. And like all great things, anime's origins are quite humble. The true origins of anime history have been lost to time. Many productions before 1917 have been lost or destroyed. Many also got what's called the Doctor Who treatment. Once a cinema was done showing a movie, the reel would either be sold to smaller theaters and eventually lost, or the reel would be simply thrown away or wiped for their silver content. Although many scholars do agree that one short film can take the title of earliest, if not first anime. Rediscovered in Kyoto in 2005, this three second short film dates to 1907, over 110 years ago. Called Katsudu Shashen, which means activity photo, it's what remains of anime's first breaths into this world. 
The truth is, we don't know if Katsudo Shashin is the first anime ever produced or not. Since it was the practice at the time that any films played at a cinema were the property of that theater, that meant they could do whatever they wanted with the movie after they were done playing it. And if they threw away the reel, that meant they threw away the records of the movie as well. We don't even know the actual name of this short film. We get Katsudo Shashin from the characters the boy in the sailor suit is drawing. We don't even know if this is a clip from a larger movie or if this is all there ever was. But what we do know about Katsudo Shashin will make any history of cinema degree holder drool. Instead of the animators drawing on individual cells, then those being recorded to film, the animators of Katsudo Shashin hand stencil directly onto the celluloid. This means they directly painted all 50 individual cells right onto the 35mm film itself. But instead of being played vertically through the projector, it was played horizontally. But since we don't have a second source of evidence for the first showing of Katsudo Shashin, its provenance in the story of anime will always stay in question. This means the birth date has to be reset. But this date too is in question. With Katsudo Shashen now being out of the running, that leaves us with three new contenders for the first anime title. The first, Otogawa Shinzo Gate of the Entrance from January 1917. Second, Bumpy's new picture book, Failure of a Great Plan from February 1917. And finally, the story of the concierge, Makazo Imakawa from April 1917. All three of these films were made by Oden Shimakawa. But we run into the same problem as we did with Katsudo Shashen. We don't know if the dates we have for these films are when they were produced or when they were shown, so we can't say which one of these was the first anime to be seen by the public. And to add further insult to injury, all three films are considered lost media. But although these three films are lost, we do have a hint of what earlier anime might have looked like. This four-minute film, rediscovered in Osaka in 2008, comes from the same time period as the previous Lost 3. Called The Doll-Edged Sword, this short film by Junichi Koyuchi tells the funny story of a samurai who frustratingly tries to fight people with his doll sword and gets knocked out each time. Released in June 1917, The Doll-Edged Sword is the earliest surviving anime we have. This short film gives us a glimpse of what anime looked like over a hundred years ago. In the beginning of anime's history, it shouldn't be a surprise that things were done differently than they are today. In the early days, there were no anime studios. Movie studios were creating anime. The Tenkatsu Company, founded in 1914, did many of the first animes until they were bought out in 1919. The long-lived Sochiku Company started making anime shorts in the 1920s. But in 1921, Seitaro Kitayama, a longtime animation director, opened the first official anime studio. During the 1920s, Kitayama's studio did animation for educational films with titles like Atmospheric Pressure and Suction Pumps, Plant Physiology, The Earth, and The Male's Journey, which they made for the Korean Governor General's office. But those and all of their work have become part of lost media. That is all but one, the only one they did that had nothing to do with educational films. Kiriyama Movie Factory's only surviving anime is their telling of Aesop's fable, The Tortoise and the Hare. Although Kiriyama and his studio lost the battle to time, they were a large leap forward in the history of anime. If you think the origins of anime were murky and confusing, you aren't alone but just wait until we try to find when manga came into existence. There is no question that without manga, there would be no anime. But before there was moving pictures, there were still pictures. You can thank your caveman ancestors for that one. But just like the origins of anime, manga's starting date is in question too. 
and its history is far older than 110 years. The story of manga has a split origin, and because of this, what is considered the first manga is in debate. One group of scholars believe manga began in the 12th century CE during the end of the Heian period. This is when the right to left style of reading was first developed. It was this period when pieces of work like the Shinyan San Angi, Legend of Mao Shigi, was printed onto enormously long scrolls. Done in the Yamato East style of ink wash painting that was developed during the Tang Dynasty of China. As you view the scroll from right to left, you are told the story of Monk Miyuren, who lived on Mount Shigi in Nara during the 9th century CE. During the same time, another art style was being developed, called Tobai. In this set of four enormously long paper scrolls called Choju Ginbaso Gagi, or the scrolls of frolicking animals and humans, you are told the story of anthropomorphic animals going about a normal human's day. These whimsical images of animals acting as humans come from the mind and hands of the artist monk Toba Soju. Okay, so we have the first images telling a story from right to left. So do we have the origins of manga? Well, perhaps not. On the other side of the origins of manga, there is another group of scholars that say manga's birth comes from a more contemporary time. So, what about the term manga? The first use of manga, or mangaki, can be found to come from Santo Kyoden's Shigi no Yuki Kai in 1798. In his bound woodblock printed picture book, you can see the stories told from right to left and illustrated with extreme skill. In his printed books, we can find the origins of what we, today, recognize as modern manga. But what he contributed is only one step in a larger journey. We have to go to the turn of the 20th century to see the next step taken. In 1902, Kitazawa Rakuten penned the first manga comic strip in the GG magazine, which was included in the GG Shimpo newspaper. His style of poking fun at the government like a modern political cartoon seen in newspapers all over the world today, and his stories of everyday people experiencing the world around them, set a course that led to the mangas and animes we see today. The story of anime has to start with the story of manga, and as you see, the beginnings of manga are just as complex as the beginnings of anime. You have to ask, do you consider scrolls read left to right with images inked over 800 years ago the first manga? Or do you consider strips and four-panel stories printed in newspapers and magazines the first manga? Perhaps that's a question that should be left to historians with a higher degree than my own. Next time on Anime in the Real World, we take a look at the story of anime through the years and see how the course of history also directed the course of anime.
Is that the ice cream man? And that first anime, that anime that turned me into an... I turn the button on, and I'm going to the cycle goes... That light change. Has to start with this...